How is everybody today, this hot July 1st? It's heating up outside, isn't it? Yes, it, it's not heating up outside? Or you just don't want to talk about it? You don't want to talk about it, okay. Well, today we are in part two of earning our allowance. And if you remember last week, we talked about spiritual blessings. You remember we talked about the spiritual blessings and spiritual blessings, if you recall, can only be found in Christ. Christ. Yes. <laughs> Great job, guys. So spiritual blessings are only found in right. Christ. Remember Ephesians 1, 3, every spiritual blessing is in Christ. And last week we talked about four spiritual blessings that we find in Christ. Anybody remember what they are? That's okay, because I have them written right here. <laughs> in Christ, we are a chosen people. You remember that scripture says that we are chosen, that God chose us before the creation of the world. Way, way back in eternity, God chose us to be in Christ. Secondly, we are chosen and blessed as adopted children. God decided to adopt us into his family, to be his children, to be called his sons and his daughters, and we see that throughout Scripture. Third, in Christ we are blessed with redemption and forgiveness of sins. Thank God for that. Amen. What Jesus did for us on the cross, we don't have to do. We don't have to pay for our sins. We don't have to pay for the remission of our sins. They were paid for when Christ died on the cross, right? <laughs> Number four, we are blessed with wisdom. Thank God for that, because I know sometimes I don't have it. How about you? Yeah, sometimes not. <laughs> Remember I said sometimes I go running headlong into a situation, and, and then I find myself like three-quarters of the way into it, and I go, uh-oh. <laughs> I don't think I belong here. So we are, we are blessed with wisdom. Well, today we are going to talk about the other three blessings that we find in Christ that are in Ephesians 1, 1 through 14. You see, what I'm doing now is because we are out of all of our seasons, our season of Pentecost, our season of Easter, our season, we're just going to work through the book of Ephesians right now. And it's only six chapters, so it should take us probably about six months or so to work through that. Ugh. Six months? Well, when I was trained to be a deacon in Pensacola in 1993, I went through the book of Luke with my pastor for a year. This is how we absorb scripture. This is how we really learn about scripture, is that we take our time, that we, well, who used to say, marinate in it. Right. That we just sit and we marinate in it, right? This is how we learn about God's word. Not just reading it and go, hmm, that's nice, and then go on to the next devotion. So we remember that spiritual blessings are only found in Christ. And therefore that means that there are no spiritual blessings outside of Christ. If you're new to our church, I'm going to let you know that we are unashamedly Christian and biblical. Amen. And we do that because we love God, and that's what God has asked us to do. We don't preach any other gospel than the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't preach a, um, what is it, um, the money gospel, the <coughs> prosperity gospel. We don't preach a prosperity gospel here. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't preach an LGBTQ gospel here, mainly because there's not one. We preach the gospel of Christ. Amen. While we are absolutely 100% welcoming and affirming to all people, we do not preach anything other than the gospel yes. of yes. Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. No spiritual blessings can be found outside of Christ. John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered and said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Acts 4, 12, you can't be saved by believing in anyone else. What? I can't be saved by believing in my bank account? Nope. You can't be saved from that. 
You might be saved from losing your house and your bank account, but you're not going to be saved in your eternity, in your eternal life. So, the question we dealt with last week before we went into the first four spiritual blessings was, how do we get in Christ? Right? We talked about that it's not a club, that everyone is welcome to be found in Christ. And Galatians 3.27 says, You are all children of God by believing in Christ Jesus. We also see in Romans 10.9 that if you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved. That's pretty simple. You may not know the prayer. You may not know what to say. You may not know what you have to do. That's okay. God knows. Amen. And if you don't have somebody that you could go to to lead you through a prayer, you could do this. God, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. But I want Jesus. I want what that person I know has. That joy that she has in the midst of terrible trials. Because she knows that she has you. God, I want what that guy at work has. Who just got demoted and came to work the next way the next day smiling and singing a worship song. I want that, God. So whoever this Jesus is, God, I want him in my life. Why? Because I can't do it by myself anymore. That's it. That's all you got to do. Amen. There's no formula. There's no A plus B equals X. That's it. So this week, we're going to talk about the next three blessings that we find in Christ. If you remember last week, my illustration was about the concept that I had about earning my allowance. Now, in some households that raise kids, I don't know if you did it, Ann, with Nick, but in some households, children, when they become an appropriate age, begin to do chores in the home, and then they are given kind of a, an allowance, a pay for that. In my home, the concept was, you will do your chores, at, but you will also get allow, an allowance separate from your chores because we want to teach you how to manage money. We want to teach you how that you get money, that you save money, and then when you want, you can spend that money on what you want. That was their hope for me. <laughs> it didn't quite work. It took about, whoa, well, what, 50 years to catch on? And oh, when I get money, I have to save money and spend the money. Honestly, that's a different story. That's a different sermon. <laughs> but we did not get an allowance because we did our chores. We got an allowance because that's what our parents wanted to gift to us. And I equated that allowance to these same spiritual blessings. That because I found myself in the home of Tipton, that was the way that they ran the household. And because I was a Tipton, I received an allowance at a certain age. I can't remember if it was like 10 or 11 or 12. But I received an allowance. Because now I find myself in Christ, I receive these spiritual blessings because he wants to bestow these things on me, on us. As Christians, he wants us to have them. And these last three, while they're all very cool, these last three are pretty heavy. And they are, we receive the revelation of his will. What does that mean? He is going, he reveals to us what his will is for eternity. You only get to know that in Christ. That's pretty cool. We're going to break that down. Also, we learn about our inheritance. Oh, money again, right? No. It's fun to think about money when we hear inheritance. And then the last thing that we're going to learn is about being sealed with the Holy Spirit. Being sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's pretty, Does that mean like in a, a Ziploc bag? No. We're going to break that down. Okay, so <clears throat> number one, if you're taking notes, in Christ we are blessed with the revelation of his will. If you're taking notes, you can use your electronic devices. You can use a tithe envelope. Um, you can ask a neighbor for a note, page, something. We are blessed with the revelation of his will. God has made known to us the mystery of his will. 
Now, what does that mean, revelation of his will? It just means that God tells us what he's going to do, right? Fancy words that are evolved out of Greek that mean God, God is telling us what he's going to do, the mystery of his will. Before we became Christians, it was a mystery to us, but because we now we are found in Christ, we learn that what God wants to do, both in our lives and in the entire plan of redemption, what it means. Mystery comes from a Greek word meaning not yet revealed. Not yet revealed. Notice, though, that this not yet revealed is made known to us in Christ. What does that mean? Is that means is if you find yourself in Christ, if you have confessed Jesus Christ, in your heart as your Lord and Savior, the Father is revealing his plan of redemption to you. That's heavy stuff. That's heavy stuff. And it was his good pleasure to do this. Oh, so because I'm in Christ, he's telling me what he's going to do, and it's his good pleasure to do it, which means, hey, I'm happy to give this to you, Audrey. I want you to know this. There's more. It, this was not an afterthought that God just said, oh, now that you're in Christ, oh, by the way, um, I'm, I'm going to just tell you my, my plan of redemption. No, but it was in his mind from the very beginning, which means that before the world was created, get this, he knew that he would choose you and that you would choose him, number one, and he knew that he would reveal his plan of redemption in you. That's serious stuff. Talk about chosen. Talk about given predestined. Talk about given something fabulous and amazing from God. So what does that make you? Not just some schmuck walking through life, getting up every day, hating your job. That makes you an amazing creation and worker of his will in this world. So whether you work at Comcast or you work at AT&T or you work at 7-Eleven or you, or you don't work right now or you're in recovery or you're living on disability or you work in the church or you work at Pier 1 or you work at Young and Art or you work at, in your own studio, you are chosen before the creation of the world to know his will. And to be his child. Awesome. Hallelujah. That's huge. Hallelujah. If you're having issues with self-esteem right now, let me tell you, grab onto that. Because that's huge. Massive. And because of receiving this revelation from God, we receive needed instruction, right? I need instruction every day. Where do I go? What do I do? How do I do it? How do I not do it? That's more important for me. Sandy calls me Safety Sally. It's good for me to know not what to do. I'm beginning my internship as a chaplain trainee at Jackson Memorial on August 20th. And I am so nervous about what not to do. <laughs> I've already run through, I'm sure, a hundred scenarios. Well, how long do I talk to them? Well, how long can I stay with them? Well, what do I do? What do I say? Can I talk about Jesus? Oh my God, how am I gonna do this? What if someone challenges my faith? Yeah. We receive needed instruction, but we also get details from God concerning salvation. But, I mean, we, if we're saved, we know we're saved, but we receive needed instruction from his word. But all of this revelation that he gives us makes it possible for obedient believers to sum up all these things. Which means that all of these things that he shares with us and tells us about and works in our heart and our life, they all those things gather together in one in our life, and then, as a part of the body of Christ, we gather together in one. So Mike, if you know that revelation, and you know that instruction that God has put into your life, 
And then you come into the body of Christ where Cynthia and Holly and Sabrina and Diane and Tom with an H all know those same things. You guys gel with one another. And that means then the body is gelling together in Christ, knowing the revelation of God's will. It's enough for me to just blow my mind. I'm sweating all over the place. It's so exciting. Let me share with you an illustration of what this looks like. It's World Cup FIFA soccer time in our home. Oh my gosh. Everything soccer is happening at 1644 right now. That's not a time, that's our address. <laughs> Sandy's been watching almost every, and I mean every soccer match that's been played. And I've, I've learned off topic that she favors the South American countries because I'm South American. Because you're half Colombian. Oh my gosh. That is amazing to me. Because for a long time you tried to shun that part of your heritage. Oh yes you did. Don't I you? did. I did. <laughs> I know. I know. So the game comes on, right? It's it's uh, Paraguay and Russia. We're, we're rooting for Paraguay. It's um, uh, Argentina and France. We're rooting, we're rooting for Argentina. We are, are we? So then I, of course, naturally have to root for France. <laughs> Sorry, France. Yesterday afternoon was France versus Argentina. And very early on in the match, France got a goal at about seven and a half minutes. And it was amazing to watch the strategy. But here's how this works. Okay, well, I was talking about a God and his will. Here's how this works. Each player on the soccer team has his own position, right? Okay, each player has his own position. Striker, goalie, wing, etc. whatever they are. And don't ask me to tell you which is which, because I don't know. But he positions himself accordingly on the field, and he is in a certain place for offense, and he's in a certain place for defense. Could somebody please go ask that gentleman to step outside? And each player is expected to skillfully obtain these objectives. On in their part on the team. Stay with me, guys. Yeah. Stay with me. Everybody is expected to accomplish their position as a striker, as the goalie, whatever it is. Okay? But every player on the team also knows the full game plan. They know, of course, that they want to win. But because based on the team that they're playing, they may be working with more speed. They may be working with more cunning. They may be sending more passes across the field because they've learned that the goalie doesn't pay attention once the ball goes quickly across the other side of the field. So the team knows their position, each teammate knows their position, but all the teammates know the whole game plan to accomplish the final goal, to win the match. The needed instruction that we receive as believers on salvation Sanctification, which means working out your salvation with fear and trembling, which sanctification is the process that we live out once we've been saved. When you're, when you're, when you're sanctified, that means working on your holiness. Okay? One of the ways that we do that, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. What's your mouth speaking? Don't answer that now. <laughs> All of these things, salvation, sanctification, redemption, how to live life as a believer through the Word of God, through the working of the Holy Spirit, are all made known to us as part of the plan of redemption. So we know the final goal. What's the final goal of the game? And we can work toward it as individual believers and when we come together in a church as a team. Make sense? Yes. That's one of three. <laughs> Whew, what time is it? Oh my gosh. I hope you're not hungry. Got plenty of time. Kidding. That's number one. <clears throat> I need some water. Number two, in Christ we are blessed with an inheritance. Money, 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 money. Money. <laughs> it's not money. You're right, Marcus. It's not money. It's not money. So, what is this inheritance? that we're blessed with. It's called a heritage, an inheritance, a heritage. 
Acts 20, 32 says this to us. Now I commit to you God's care. I commit you to the word of his grace. It can build you up. And then you will share what God plans to give all his people. It's a spiritual inheritance. Christians, as Christians, we partake in this inheritance now in the kingdom. There's an inheritance in part that you've been given now. That you walk in now. Knowing part of the redemption of his plan. Having God's protection in your life. Learning the word of God. Having the Holy Spirit in, inside of you. To live inside of you. But there's also a part of the inheritance that's to come. And that will be once we find ourselves in heaven. Amen? Um, the American Standard Version says that... Um, in Christ, in whom also we were made a heritage. So according to this rendering of the word, we receive an inheritance that is incorruptible. That means it doesn't fade away. What does that mean? You don't lose it. Incorruptible just means you don't lose it. You don't lose this inheritance. Right. It is God's promise. <clears throat> so... It could be said that as God's redeeming work as his heritage, we receive this inheritance from God. He gives us this inheritance that we will not lose, does, does, does not go away. It's deep, right? Let me break it down for you. My mom, when she died, she gave each of us each of her children a small amount of money, all five of us. Split it, split it up evenly in five ways. There were certain things that, other things that we were given also that we had shared with her years and years and years ago that we would like when she was asking these, the serious questions. But each one of us got a certain amount of money, evenly split five ways. And some of us chose to spend it right away some of us chose to spend it on home improvement. Um, some saved it. Some gave it to another uh, that, that they thought needed it more. But eventually, one day, that money will be gone. It's corruptible, right? It'll be gone. It'll be spent. It'll be spent on one thing or another. It'll, be, it'll fade away. But this inheritance that we receive in Christ is incorruptible. It will never fade. It will never leave us. It will never be gone because we are in Christ. Can I put a, a word, a picture, a thing in your mind for this inheritance? No, because it's, there's nothing else like it. It's a deposit that he has made in you. Which transitions me to my third point is that we are blessed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. And the seal is an identifying mark to denote ownership. The seal in the Old Testament, when there was an owner, like say of a, of a certain type of product, and he would package that up into crates, and they would send it on ships to, to go to other lands, like spices and oils, they would pack up those products and they would take some hot wax that they would drip, sometimes from a candle, onto the package where it had to be opened. And they would pour that hot wax there and then they would take their signet ring, right? Sometimes it was a ring. And the ring had a seal that signified, signet ring, that that was the owner's symbol, emblem. And he would take his ring and he would stamp it down onto that hot wax and it would make the opposite of the emblem. So when that package was opened, they would know who that belonged to. God has taken his signet ring and put it on your heart. He has put it on your heart to say, get this, this is mine. Amen. Ella es mío. She belongs to me.
when we are baptized, sorry, when we are saved, we are given the Holy Spirit to show that we belong to God. And when we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, it means that when people become Christians, the Spirit identifies them as being theirs and being under His authority. Yeah. Under His authority and under His protection. The Holy Spirit is a guarantee of our inheritance, which we just talked about. It's a guarantee. It's a down payment. It's a pledge. It's a promissory note. The Holy Spirit is the promise that it is. we are also going to receive future payment, which is eternal life. Remember I talked last week about that rope? This part is red. The rest of it goes out the door to eternity. The Holy Spirit is a promise that this part of this rope will be translated into a life with God forever in heaven whenever our body gives up. It's a guarantee. It's a pledge. I'll give you an example. Hey, it's an illustration day. Buying a new home. Austin. You shop. You find a real estate agent. You shop some more. That one's not available. You shop some more. You apply for the loan. You submit a mountain, and I mean a mountain, <laughs> paperwork. Ah! Your VA and your pay and your bank statements. Why do they need to see everything I paid for? Because we want to see that you're going to be able to pay for it. You get the loan, and you close on the house having made a deposit. Right? When you go through the closing, there's proof given to you that you have a right to live in that home. And there's also proof that you've made that deposit in the paperwork. You pay $2,000 or $3,000 or $25,000 or whatever it was that you had to make a deposit for to buy the home. If you're a veteran, you can get a no deposit loan. I love being a veteran. Thank you. But there's proof that you made that deposit so the bank doesn't come and say for a $150,000 loan that you owe $150,000 because no, Mike, you made a $20,000 deposit on that home so Mike only owes $130,000, not $150,000. That deposit is promised that once Mike pays off that $130,000, of course, we're definitely not talking about homes in South Florida, <laughs> once he makes that payment, that will be his home. Yes. The seal of the Holy Spirit, get this, is a promise of further payment. Uh, one day my body is going to stop functioning, hopefully later rather than sooner, and because <laughs> I am found in Christ, I have the seal of the Holy Spirit on me. I have a promise right here stamped on my heart that said Jesus Christ. And I have a promise that when I die, I will live with him forever in heaven. That's the promise. So in Christ, we receive a revelation of his will. Amen. We receive an inheritance and we receive a proof of that inheritance that is that seal yeah. with the Holy Spirit. You guys got to remember this stuff. Because yeah. someday when you're feeling down and you're feeling like life doesn't matter and you're feeling like you don't have a purpose, this is your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. This is why you were chosen. And this is also why he wants to use you to reveal Jesus to others. Perry, there's a purpose. There's a reason, buddy. You're called and you're chosen according to his good will. Amen. Amen. He has a plan for you, man. Yes, amen. And he has a plan for every one of us. So as we continue our worship service, man, I just want you to be filled with that. I want you to be fired up. I want you to be excited about what God has done for you and wants to continue to do in your life. You were chosen by God. Amen. Amen.